Hi, I'm Viv. This is a quick introduction to open education. So what does open education mean? Well, really, there's been a whole shift in how education is thought about and practised actually around the world. So we refer to the global open education movement. Catherine Cassily there worked for an organisation who really started to fund and initiate this. And she gives some lovely definitions of open education resources and they are teaching and learning materials specifically and um, they're open on the web, they're in all languages, they're reusable so people can take OERs, students can use them, lecturers can adapt them and repurpose them and, and that's the whole philosophy behind it. On the right here you've got a link to um, a YouTube introduction to OER that I gave at some, um, at some event some time ago. So this is how it all started really, I mean it's been going since the millennium, although people have been sharing stuff before that, really, but not, not at any scale. And I think open as a philosophy really um, hit the nail on the head for a lot of people who were thinking, yeah, well this is publicly funded money, I actually want to share my, my, my materials and my practice actually to the wider, the wider benefit of people. Um, so initiatives started around 2000, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the university there in, in, um, in America made a policy decision to release all their lectures online. Creative Commons came along, we'll talk about the license, really that was the key to the door, an open license that facilitated this. And then you have things like Wikipedia, I mean they're over 10 years old now, it's an open resource and an open community. Um, and we, we, as we go through, the MOOCs, the massive online open courses, started to appear. We have different repositories where OERs are stored. So in the UK, that's called Joram. And um, more MOOCs towards the end, including the UK launching FutureLearn in 2013. So essentially, open education resources are copyright free with an open license to use. They don't have any cost. And generally, I think if people have done these things, they're releasing stuff that is of better quality because actually it's quite, it's quite um, um, a step forward to actually share your resources. So they are generally of good quality and maybe even been peer-reviewed and they are accessible. So they're multimedia files quite often, so you can download them, you can view them on mobile devices, so they're actually a nice accessible learning format. But this just highlights some of the open buzzwords if you like to show you the scope of how this is impacted on research science and academia excuse me so you've got the open education resources OER you've got open courseware which is the same thing they're learning materials there are various repositories we've got open access publishing open source um, computer software open research and open data so that's the open publishing and sharing of research data and really the key to it has been the Creative Commons license. It's a charity, non-profit organisation in the States. It's an amazing organisation. So you see the CC logo there to look out for. If you see that on anything, a picture, a video, it means it's open licensed. And there are six levels of license. The top two are the most open. And where it says buy, it means, well, use my resource, but just, just reference me. So give an attribution. Share alike means you can take that resource, you can mash it up, you can repurpose it, you can chop it up, but share it back. So they're really, really open ways of working. That's a completely different philosophy of working. And as we go down, the licenses become more restrictive. NC means no commercial use. ND means no derivatives, so you can't mash it up at all. And just to give you a taste of some... And the range of activities, they can be entire degree programs that are open, such as the photography one, Phonar, at Coventry. There can be education resources and animations that are open. So the Nottingham University has an extensive library. I think it's way over 180 now of science and health learning materials, all openly licensed. Myself, I was involved and still run three national websites, um, a lab skills resource, Scooter, which is a resource for sickle cell disease, and House, which is health and life science OER, which shared materials in biomedical science, nursing, midwifery, and forensic science. All that stuff is out there all over the web now. 
And just to give you an idea of what that might be, um, we collaborated with hospitals to share hospital images and case studies. And the benefits were we packaged these up into learning materials that the hospitals could then use with their staff. We negotiated the licence for an entire textbook that was out of publication. So this genetics textbook looking at haemoglobin is openly licensed and now freely available on the web. And there might have been images and other um, learning content from professional societies like the Fingerprint Society here, for example. Students loved it um, and liked the access to good quality learning materials and MOOCs, which are massive online open courses, have appeared more recently. There are some MOOCs, though, that actually we wouldn't necessarily define as open. Some of them now incur a small cost to enrol. And actually, if you look at MOOCs, a lot of the content isn't openly licensed. But that said, you can have access to bite-sized chunks of learning and, and six to eight week courses on a whole range of things. Um, and I really think everyone should experience a MOOC just to see how education can be delivered online. Um, open access publishing um, is here to stay. Some 10% of journals now have an open access route and, th and this, will, this will certainly continue to grow um, to take publications away from behind locked doors. We're now also talking about researchers sharing their data openly and this is a funding requirement from some of the large UK funding councils. So this is a massive change to the way we work. It might even affect your masters, your PhDs and your further study. And people are also using the idea of open notebooks. So your your lab records you could keep in an open open context on the web and other people can comment and collaborate on that. So that's a whistle stop too and here are some further links to things to read if you're interested but um, do look out for open education.